All you gotta do is just switch it on and off again, right? Yeah, makes That's sense. How it works. Yeah, I know a Philly cheesesteak makes me want to fall asleep. That's kind of like control alt delete. So, yeah. yeah, checks yeah. out to me. This is hard reset right there. Blue <laughs> screen of death. There goes Corey. <laughs> anyway, friends, welcome to round number six of the Pioneer portion of Pro Tour Phyrexia. All will be won. We've got Rikakuma Guy on Gruel Vehicles up against Takumi Matsura on Mono White. Now, this yeah. was a deck that when we asked in our green room, what's the best deck in the format? and two players, or two of us, said Mono White, and you were one of them. I was one of them, and then swiftly I was uh, put into check where they were saying, uh -huh. yeah, you know what? Mono White is actually not that good now amongst the players' opinions, mm -hmm. um, where it just hasn't been having as good of a weekend, but I really am always afraid to play against this deck. I think it's extremely powerful. Um, so yeah, an incredibly powerful deck. Here's the two go-to aggressive decks oh, yeah. that are really trying to play against other decks, like uh, Mani was saying, but uh, you know, we'll definitely have plenty of fireworks between the two here. Oh yeah, starting things off with a recruitment officer, a new addition from Brothers War, able to go and dig out some extra friends for you, followed up with a Luminarch Aspirant, so three points of damage, boom, let's get this show on the road. Yep, the dream start, one drop with Luminarch Aspirant to get this going, we're really gonna put a check to see if we have a Bone Crusher Giant mm -hmm. here from Riku, mm -hmm. uh, tends to be the best answer to this card, but I don't believe I saw it, maybe a bit of a slower hand from Riku. Well, for Riku Kumagai, you know, you definitely want to be delivering the beasts of your own, and that's a turn to Reckless Stormseeker, if he so chooses yep. to go that route. Miglos as well, looks like a Crowan War and a bunch of lands. A Crowan mm -hmm. War, extremely good if you can Hopefully. nab an untapped creature and just block. <laughs> and almost all these mono-white creatures, they don't have more toughness than power, so that third chapter is going to usually oh, yeah. just be kind of a one-sided wrath, um, which, it, which is going to be amazing if Riku has the time. Yeah, I mean, the only one of the biggish booty, uh, hopeful, hopeful <laughs> they shit, one of them, yeah. and Adeline Resplendent and Cathar, depending on how many creatures on the board. That's so. definitely one of the biggest ones, yep. I will say that. Yeah, at that point, you're like, you know what? You can have your fourth creature. I will not kill that. And uh, we'll go to chapter three of the Akron War. It's dead. So no answer as it stands for this Luminarch Aspirant. And this card has been a mainstay in a lot of aggressive strategies yeah. for Mono White. You know, in Standard, when it was like legal there, and now in Pioneer. Mm -hmm. Just being able to, you know, allow your creatures to trade hands, essentially, yeah. with the Gruul decks. It makes blocking a nightmare. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's just so tough. A really skilled Magic player, which, let's get real, all these players mm -hmm. are that are at this Pro Tour, you know, this is definitely the, the upper 1% of all Magic players. They know exactly how to make combat as difficult as possible oh, yeah. on other players. And, uh, yeah, I mean, look at this. Look at this start. This oh, is incredible. No third land. That's the only problem. Um, but that's about it. Otherwise, it's, it's amazing here. Yeah. Looking at Takumi Matsuura's side of things, the ideal start here, just so many creatures able to get around, you know, essentially it's a go-wide strategy here for Takumi, whereas, you know, on the Gruul side of things, we want to try and get the biggest things as possible and just start smashing. Exactly. Yeah, we'll see here if it's kind of time to get this Akroan War down. The one problem with Akroan War is if we look at Hopeful Initiate, mm. that being able to remove some counters and destroy it, you're almost forced to take the Hopeful Initiate here. Yeah. And you can still block with it, so, you know, it's not so bad, but it is pretty slow. Really, the choice between that and Miglos, another one of the new cards from mm -hmm. Phyrexia here. Oh, yeah. Here comes the Akron War. Let's steal some stuff. And uh, let's see what the target is. I have to say, sagas that, you know, in mm -hmm. this fashion that just go away when they're done. You know, we see Fable mm -hmm. and some of the new edition and stuff, but I love these style of Fables. They they do three different things, you know? I, I, I just absolutely oh. love it. It's, oh, wow. So you get to okay. put a counter on as well. Yeah, why not? Okay, okay. I can see it. You know, I, I kind of like this. One one decision kind of feels like, a, okay, I must be careful. And the other one's like, no, I'm just going to beat you to death. Kind of yes, thing, right? exactly, exactly. <laughs> But yeah, certainly the Hopeful Initiate can attack, get that counter. Yeah, and then you can just remove two but counters. But you need to remove two, though. So yeah, if yeah. it does attack, it's just going to run into a big old werewolf here. Exactly. You can remove two counters from any of your creatures, though, too, to destroy it and just get it back right away. So, you yeah. know, you can just take a couple counters off that recruitment officer after we already deal damage. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, then we got trouble. Yeah, counters are plenty, courtesy of the Luminarch Aspirant. And Tali's Lieutenant now adding to the counters. 
Yep, able to have kind of a, a free block there, 3-4 three, on 3-4. Three, Doesn't have the mana up, of course, so cannot do anything mm -hmm. with the Akron War, but it's not that vital turn where it's yeah. about to go to Chapter 3 and destroy stuff, so uh, definitely might see it from uh, Takanumi next turn. Sure, you're going to see land number four. Five mana available for Rikakuma guy. Looks like we're going to see a Miglos here, potentially. Yeah, another one of our cards from Phyrexia All Will Be One. Mm -hmm. And speaking of new cards from Phyrexia All Will Be One, Mono White playing four Ossification in the main. <laughs> that is awesome. It's an incredible yeah. card. That's a, that says, I would like to just remove everything from the board, please, and yeah. just hit you as hard as I possibly can. Absolutely. I just think of, like, Shieldred or something. <laughs> like, I'd be like, I have a great answer to yeah. Shieldred now, where normally that card would just destroy Mono mm. White. So, yeah, a nice addition. So Miglos enters with the five counters on. Can do two out of the three options, or just, you know, decide to use the... The one mana ability a couple times, but eh, that's not really interesting. Yeah, absolutely. Vigilance, though, a nice ability mm -hmm. in this matchup. Just, I'm going to attack a couple times and play as much defense as possible. Yeah. Vigilance and Menace, haste courtesy of the Reckless Storm Seeker. So now everything is forced to get in there. Chapter 2 is forcing everything to attack. Not that it's uh, too hard to, uh, <laughs> to talk... <laughs> Taka, Takanumi into attacking. Yeah, mono white decks don't typically need a lot of uh, encouragement to turn things sideways. Yeah, but when you're it. up against this wall of green and red stuff, it's a little, uh, a little yeah, intimidating. Yeah, it's a brutal getting into that. Now you could destroy it before mm -hmm. combat and still get a counter on it. Yeah, that is, that is interesting. Mm -hmm. you got to have a different <laughs> yeah. way of putting track. these counters on it. Otherwise, you're <laughs> like, oh, wow, this card is a 9-9. <laughs> no, it certainly is not. So. I do believe the Luminarch Aspirin put the 1-1 one -one counter on Miglos. Okay. <laughs> that's a big dice. <laughs> Another 12? thing that's a, mm -hmm. a welcome back to Paper Magic. Yeah. You know, you yeah. see this on Arena, and it, it differentiates the tokens, but now you, do, you just got to have a different way to look at it. So four oil counters still on Miglos as, as well as the one ones. That's a five five. Yeah, that's not a small critter over there. Large creature, and we did see going to combat and attacking with one creature. Riku said, "Nope, I uh, got to attack with all of them." Yeah. And now we're in combat. It's that kind of thing. So you know, even if you kind of have a change of heart, <laughs> it doesn't matter. You just you're in combat. You'll have to attack. Mm -hmm. um, got to turn some things sideways. Might we see the activation here from the Hopeful Initiate? What are we going for? Yeah, this is interesting. Okay. All righty. There might be a situation where a judge is called in this scenario. You know, like, it, it, it may be a situation at FNM. You just mm -hmm. let this kind of things go. But if you go to combat, yeah, usually you know, you'd be through. have to. But it looks like uh, Riku not trying to force a take back or anything. Brutal Cathar coming down, able to take care of the Miglos. And now we're going to see the swing in with the creatures that are able to attack. And the counter on the Hopeful Initiate. And now we are going to have Chapter 3 of a Crow and War coming next turn. Going to clean up everything but Hopeful Initiate. So mm -hmm. Riku can have that on his mind as well. Like, okay, maybe I want to try to just deal with the one creature that would live. And... Uh, Go from there, but the life total of seven not being too forgiving no. here. Definitely want to give the Luminarch Aspirant back. The nice interaction with the Akroan War in Gruul, mm -hmm. when you have vehicles, yep. you're able to do, after your draw stab, chapter three on the stack of Akroan War, tap it to crew, give it back, dies because it is a tapped creature. Yep. That's kind of the, the cute trick <laughs> as you get a Sky Sovereign equipped it already or something <laughs> like that. In this instance, the Luminarch Aspirant likely to jump in front of one of these attackers. Otherwise, you got to give it back. Yeah. Don't want to do that. Don't want to do that. No, no. <laughs> yeah, there you go. The so creature, a couple trades, a couple chumps. Creature's already aligned for perfect blocks there. Mm -hmm. That's convenient. <laughs> and down to five goes Rikakuma guy. So Reckless Stormseeker, untap, upkeep, draw. 
damage will be dealt to the tapped creatures. As you mentioned, the hopeful initiate will survive. So just the two creatures hanging out there right now. And look at that hand, unfortunately, for Riku, Oof. just four lands. Looks like it's not, it doesn't always happen, Giganta but it time, might huh? be a Giganta mm -hmm. time. Exactly, exactly what Riku doesn't want to see. Yeah. It's a bad day to have eyes, because you hate to see that. Yeah. <laughs> Takumi absolutely does want to see oh, this, yeah. though. <laughs> oh, yeah. He, like... At this point in the game, if your opponent on Gruul is doing diddly squat on their turn, except yes. flipping the uh, the Reckless Stormseeker, you're going to be pretty happy with that. And you know what's even worse, Ailey, mm -hmm. is we're in day. We're going to go to night, which will help Reckless Stormseeker, mm -hmm. but Brutal Cathar gets a little bit more yeah. brutal as yeah. a, a big 3-3 three, three first striker that's going to ward. <laughs> and not only that, but... If Takumi plays two spell, which is not that hard to do as long as your hand isn't really bad, you flip it back and you take another thing. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. Brutal Cathar, when you ever get to that level, is aptly named. It's mm -hmm. very brutal. Yeah, it certainly is. Moon Rage Brute can't do any, you know, exiling. So if you were to play that at nighttime, it wouldn't exile anything. But as Correct. soon as it flips back, it steals things. Which I've is been gotten got by that plenty of times. Oh, to be yeah. like, okay, Me all too. I gotta do is exile your creature. Here's a it's brutal. Like, oh no, it's oh. nighttime. It ain't brutal yeah. Cathar right now. Okay, actually cannot double spell here. Mm -mm. Unfortunately, with the the three two drops and only three land, you can't really get that going. You also don't get the counter um, from yeah. um, Thalia's lieutenant. <laughs> Oh, okay, I was like, this is a pretty easy block on the first striker, but being at five, you have to block hopeful initiate. So yeah. we're kind of maybe posturing a little bit, but there's only one block here. Yeah, just make it look like there's something in hand. Yep. Don't give away too much infor information. <laughs> the Seiju who endures isn't going to get anything done here at this point. I had a mountain oh, off the top. Man, that is just rough beats and a beat down indeed. At least it's Metsura. the best mountain. You know, I mean, sure. <laughs> Objectively, best mountain okay. there from, from me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what is the play here for Rikukuma guy? He can animate the lair, but that's not going to be enough. So we're going to go to game number two here. Nice fast yeah. magic. I love this. I do love it. Pioneer is such a fun format. Mm -hmm. You know, there is the speed of the format. That's kind of a, a big talking point from a lot of players. Be like, yeah, if on the play, it's a little more important. That is definitely mm -hmm. a factor. But there's so many decks, and they're all doing these kind of proactive things, and they all have such play against each other. So, yeah, Pioneer, one of my favorite formats. Yeah. Diverse, fun. Yeah. You know. Top deck being 15%. I mean, that's that's really says enough about the yeah. format. That's that's a great number. <laughs> oh, one of the uh, <laughs> events that we've done, uh, the top deck was 69%, which is not very nice. Not very nice. Yeah, so, I believe that was Oko, right? Uh, yeah, and I Oko. think that was about the last. One. That was the last one I played in. <laughs> <laughs> so this is certainly a welcome change of pace. And you know what the players were talking about before this round. You know, it, it's it's all about reps with the deck so yes. that you're most comfortable with. Yeah. That's more often than not the most important factor when coming into a tournament like this is, you know, play what you're comfortable with. Know 100%. the metagame. Yeah, you think about it and, you know, I mean, we, we heard Nathan with that incredible mm -hmm. breakdown of what he thought, why he did the deck, why he's playing the deck mm -hmm. he is. And there's those minor changes where you're like, okay, I expect Rakdos to be the best or I expect it to be the top deck and green. So you can kind of metagame against that. Yeah. But then you look at that, it's like, that's 25% of the field. That means, you know, every four matches you're going to play <laughs> against one of those decks that you're trying to prepare for. You can play against the other spread of things and your deck isn't very good against just everything as a whole and you have a really bad tournament so i totally agree with them just play what you know and uh you know wins usually come to you a lot yeah. easier than being like i need to learn lotus right now yeah. to gain this minor edge you know that usually <laughs> doesn't work out too well for players so we saw scroll taking care of there with the stomp courtesy of bone crusher giant before talia hit the battlefield do we have your story time with Bone Crusher this time? Or is oh, that story only time with Bone Crusher? In a while? Bone yeah. Crusher stood on a mite. <laughs> the mite was not mighty. <laughs> okay, okay. It got squished. <laughs> I was going to be like, stepped on a crack, <laughs> broke your back kind of thing. Okay, but yeah, stepped on a mite. Okay, <laughs> all right. <laughs> stepped on a mite, did not put up a fight. And there that is all there is to that. <laughs> Here we see Luminarch Aspirant and Talia getting a little chunkier now. 
Yeah, didn't get the job done there. 17 is the life total for Kakuma Guy. Thalia is kind of the card that you would expect to be taken out in aggro matchups, mm. but there's so many creatures that are also spells. You know, Azuka's yeah. Chariot being kind of the main one. You have Stomp that still gets interfered with. A Crow in War if Riku leaves those in. So uh, Thalia is still being quite good here. Yeah. And one thing to note as well with this deck in particular with Gigantha, if you ever want to spot an Embercleave, Corey. Yeah. Yeah. Just look if Gigantha's been revealed or not. Exactly. Exactly. Mm. Yep. Three Ember Cleaves <laughs> in the sideboard here for Riku in those matchups where you just really want to speed up, usually against combo, yeah. mono green. Mono green's very afraid of Ember Cleave. <laughs> mono white, not so much. You want to be bringing in all of these rending volleys, fries, mm -hmm. um, maybe some scavenging oozes, stuff like that to be able to deal with other creatures. So two creature lands and a Bone Crusher Giant on board here for Rikukuma Guy. And Takumi Matsuura has a good collection of creatures. Recruitment Officer, Talia's Lieutenant, oh, excuse me, Talia, and the Luminarch Aspirant. And one thing that's just going great mm -hmm. um, for Takumi is just look at that mana efficiency. Used up his mana at every single turn. Yep. One drop into two drop into two drop one oh. drop. Whenever <laughs> you can do this, this deck looks really, really tough to beat. Yeah. Even in a matchup that maybe is supposed to be favored. You know, I think this one is very close to 50-50. But with a lot of red removal and having mm. rending volley in the sideboard, that's kind of mono white aggro's kind of Achilles heel. Yeah. That's just a really good card right now. Oh, but man. look at this star. What do you do to this? Tony's lieutenant after another creature. So five creatures on the board. Four of them are going to get a counter now, courtesy of the lieutenant. So, <laughs> yeah, this is looking yeah. pretty good for Takumi on Mono White. Yeah, and hopeful Initiate is going to get two counters after it attacks, as long as Thalia doesn't die. And yeah, all, all around, <laughs> just a gigantic attack here. Man, doing math. Math is for blockers, and you ain't got none right <laughs> now, unfortunately, for Riku Kumagai. So it looks like we do have one Bone Crusher where Riku can do something like animate Mutavolt, block, and then stomp something. Mm -hmm. If you if you want to wait to combat to have that extra blocker, or you try to kill Luminarch Aspirant before it's given the opportunity to put a counter on something. Either way you spell it, this is bad news this bears bad news for news Riku bears. for sure. <laughs> Doesn't get in there with Hopeful Initiate. Yeah, that's going to hang back for the time being. But I think we're going to see what you just mentioned there, Mutavolt jumping up, getting in the way of one of these creatures, mm -hmm. and then having to pay the three mana for the stump, as the non-creature spells are one more. Yeah, and that's the problem is uh, there's just not a great stomp target, except Dahlia's Lieutenant, I guess. You have to block yeah. there, stomp the Lieutenant, mm -hmm. but even that is not great. Not great at all. Yeah, that feels real bad. But we do have the Cadillac coming down next turn, so that is going to produce a decent amount of blockers mm -hmm. and, and could easily get Riku back in the game, but falling down to 10 life here. Mm -hmm. So still doing okay. This game is definitely not over yet, but what a what a start yeah. so far. Excellent start indeed. Land Royals off the top. Not the thing you want to see at this point in the game, but like you mentioned, we can see good old Cat Car come on down, Essex Chariot, mm -hmm. two blockers. But, you know, at this point, like, they're just going to... Okay, they're going to be crude to yeah. get the, the, the bigger creature on blocking duty, but, yeah. Oh, yeah, excuse me, bad. the Mutavolt died, so you can't even cast a Zika's That's Chariot true, yeah. with Thalia. So, yeah, this is actually oh, really bad. The one thing that Riku does have going for him right now is a popular way that all these aggressive mono-white decks were getting through is Brave the Elements. Oh, yeah. That is uh, zero copies in this yeah. list here. It is switched out for ossification, mm -hmm. which, you know, is going to have its benefits. It's going to have its, its disadvantages uh, from time to time. I mean, you don't need to sneak through any blockers if there aren't any. Yeah, touche. Mm -hmm. Touche. Yeah. yeah the, the ghoul deck definitely doesn't want to be on the back foot, but there's blockers in the way. There's some giants down and the Lenoir Elf, which will jump in the way of the biggest thing, most likely. Yep. So let's see what Takumi Matsura can do here if we're going wow. to see this game wrapped up in a clean 2-0 from Mono White Humans. Takumi with an incredible hand here too. Brutal Cathara is one play option or you can just go Hopeful Initiate and Luminarch Aspirant. So those are the two decisions before we get to combat and we start deciding where we want to put dice with these <laughs> Luminarch Aspirants. But just on surface value, Brutal Cathar on one of the Bone Crushers and then no matter what, your Thalia is basically getting in there for free. First Strike will not be able to, um, it won't be able to kill 
or won't it be won't able to be killed. killed with Bone Crusher and Lana War teaming up or anything. So you have that going for you. But the play you would like to make is add another Luminar Aspirin and be able to put enough counters on something in such a way that there's not good blocks. So that's kind of the decision okay. point. Well, here comes Luminarch Aspirant number two to add to Rikakuma Guy's woes. So a nice thing here is if you put both counters on Thalia, mm -hmm. then it is six power, and no matter what, there isn't a great block. With this, I believe you can double block Thalia with two Bone Crushers, and... Uh, and actually just trade Bone Crusher for Thalia here, so I don't love this. Because that's definitely the block I think I would do here. Thalia is just getting too large. First strike in an aggro mirror ends up being quite the problem. Yeah. And with Riku at 10 life, you can just double block that and go ahead and just take 7. Fall to 3 and then try to recover with a Zika's Chariot. Yeah. It's not a great plan, but definitely an option here for Riku. And there is a land in hand, so the chariot could be cost. Yeah, I if the there is a oil. chariot in hand, just maybe so, yeah. disappeared from the graphic on the side. Unless we have been debated, let's find out. Yeah, <laughs> maybe it's just me dreaming of Cadillacs here. Yeah, I yeah. guess. Yeah, I, I get it. Cats are cute. <laughs> Look, they're even ready and waiting in the token pile over there. So. Yeah, absolutely. It's a big thing here for Rikakuma guy wants to make sure that the most efficient use of his creatures and his life total is the case. It's like thinking it out, kind of both. Yeah, maybe, no, doesn't look oh. like there was an Ezekiel's Chariot. We're imagining things. I guess then. so, yeah. It's an Outland Liberator in hand there, so. Forgive us, but we're going to top deck an Ezekiel's Chariot. That's, exactly. That's my yep. prediction. We just, we just called it the whole time. Yep. So there is Talia taken care of. One Bone Crusher will die. Yeah, and then I, that could have been a little bit of a misstep here because if you make that Thalia oh. six power, and right as I say that, there's the Akron where that would have taken a giant giant creature. So yeah, maybe a maybe a good call, diversifying your tokens. <laughs> a Crone war just doesn't look great here though. Like yeah, it can just be blown up by one of the multiple yeah. hopeful initiates. You know, there's still brutal Cathar here. I don't think there's a way out here for Riku. Yeah, this would have been great if the hopeful initiates weren't a factor right now, but plenty of counters to choose from. It would take up the entire turn for Takumi Matsuura, but that's basically everything he needs. But yeah. Gonna go for it. That's the only thing that Rukukuma guy can do at this point. Steal that Luminarch Aspirin, put the counter on. No longer has to pay the tax of Thalia there, so just four mm -hmm. mana tapped. No one likes tax. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see where we're going from here with Takumi Matsura. Two cards in hand. A brutal Cathar can remove something off this battlefield. Yep, so now it's just the choice of activating Hopeful Initiate or Brutal Cathar. Mm -hmm. so Mono White Aggro decks don't usually have a ton of decisions, <laughs> but they're very impactful. You oh, know, yeah. like just one token here or there can be the difference of, you know, winning a game and losing it. So instead, that goes nice. away. Luminar Gasparant comes back. And now we figure out where we want to place these. Two triggers on the two attackers, perhaps. Yep. And something that is being considered here is if I attack with the training trigger on the stack, mm -hmm. if the larger one goes away, then you do not get a counter on the smaller one. Okay. So, you know, if there was a one mana way to deal with an X5, creature here, then that Bone Crusher could get a free block, but Rending Volley being the only card, uh, this was a pretty safe attack. That's a four power piece on those hopeful initiates and the Luminarch Aspirant, so I can't even just like, you know, yep. block the creature with the lowest power there, otherwise you kind of die, so. Yep. Really nice, really nice spread mm. of uh, tokens there, just forcing the trade there and not giving Riku any kind of advantageous block. Big draw step. That had three counters on, so that was a 4-5? A 4-5, yep. And Bone Crusher was a 5-4 thanks to the Luminar Gasparin. That was ah, stolen, yes. so yep, yep. Counter went on the friends, so trade there. And this is looking quite bad indeed for Rikakuma guy fans. Yeah. But if you're a fan of mono white humans, you like to turn yeah. things sideways. I mean, that's typically a gruel thing, but yeah, mono white humans can just absolutely smash. 
Exactly. It's not the type of deck that I usually like to play too much, but it is the type of the deck that I lose to all the time. Mm -hmm. You're know? <laughs> gonna see the Outland Liberator hit the board. You can destroy an artifact or enchantment. Nothing of the sort on the other side of the battlefield right now. And now we're gonna see the Brutal Cathar take care of that. <laughs> and that will be the scoop from Rikukuma guys. That's Akume Matsura. Picking up a pretty clean victory there from Mono White Humans. That was a really clean victory. You know, some solid draws from our Mono White Hero yeah. there. But, uh, you know, Riku did draw a lot of lands as well. But, yeah, that matchup just looked pretty rough for Gruul, I must yeah. say. Yeah, very much so. Brutal. In both games, Mono White just had the perfect start. Yeah. You know, curving out, applying pressure, and just never giving up. N relentless. Yeah. yeah, no mana problems, anything like that. I mean, that is the benefit you're going to get from these monocolored aggro decks. Things are pretty smooth. It's just, okay, do I not have five lands? You know, do I at least have two? That's really all you're looking for, and then your draws are, are pretty nice, pretty consistent. <laughs> well, you know what else is pretty nice? More magic! And we're going to have plenty more of that after this break. <laughs> Welcome back to coverage of Pro Tour for Rexia. All will be one. Love Very it. dramatic, because, you know, <laughs> scary things happen and the bad guys won. Spoiler alert, sorry. Hi, I'm Ailey. This is Corey. And Hello. we have plenty more magic here in the Pioneer portion of the Pro Tour, my friends. We're going to jump into David Inglis versus Alberto Manchado Gomez. Abzan Greasefang versus Rakdos Midrange. All now, right. Greasefang was kind of the big bad at one point. Everyone was like, wow, oh, this deck is unfair and meh, 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 meh. You know, yeah. as magic players do. So, <laughs> how do you like its chances here as we go into a 5 and 0 for both players? They're looking yeah. good. Yeah, absolutely. It was kind of the original Splinter Twin. I guess besides <laughs> Splinter Twin, I know chat's like, come on, come on. The original Splinter Twin is Splinter Twin. But yes, <laughs> Greasefang bringing back Parhelion 2 <laughs> is an incredibly powerful thing. And David has been making this look really good. You know, just uh, beat Shota a little bit ago uh -huh. uh, in the feature match. And you got to think he feels pretty good about this matchup, considering Rakdos is what a lot of people expected. David's list is awesome, too. Vessel of, of Nascency, we're going to kind of remember from back in the days of trying to fill up delirium in mm -hmm. the graveyard for a you know a pesky uh, little creature by the name of Emmercool oh, to try to feed that but now we're just trying to feed kind of the same thing to get traverse online and then traverse can get grease fang which just makes this deck a little bit more consistent because that was the whole problem with this deck mm. was you know you're just hoping to top deck grease fang and if you don't get it all of a sudden you're no you're playing Rafine's informant <laughs> you know I mean you're not playing the power <laughs> level not every card is at that extreme power level 
But yeah. if you can make this deck more consistent, then it's in incredibly powerful. I see a couple of other additions in this deck. Scrap Work Mutt. Yes. That's a card I didn't think I'd see playing <laughs> Constructed, but hey, there it is. Good on you, little buddy. Mostly for Artifact. It's yep. an Artifact creature, so giving that two types for Delirium as well is, mm -hmm. is a pretty big deal. Yeah, just being able to chuck a, a big old boat or something into the graveyard <laughs> as well, Parhelion, as it were. But yeah, kick things off here with a thought seize. So Alberto taking stock or making sure he knows exactly what's in hand. And you know what? One good thought seize deserves another. Absolutely does. And it looks like both players were on the mulligan to six here. So thought seize being, you know, extra Brutal. powerful. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, so we're going to be seeing, I, I kind of love these games because mm -hmm. it does come down to top decking a little bit, but it's yeah. always exciting. You're like, <laughs> you drew that? Come on. Really? I just needed yep. one turn without you drawing that card. Yeah, it's always the, yeah. oh, next turn I would have got you. <laughs> exactly. Like, next <laughs> turn I would have had you if you didn't put those cards in your deck that you drew. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you draw the cards in your deck. Exactly, yep. <laughs> Grumbles in magic. Oh, goodness me. But... Both players looking to pick up the victory here in game number two as we join David Inglis won a lengthy game one. 17 minutes, I believe, is wow. what it took to get the job done with Abzan Griesvang. That is large. So Pithing Needle coming in, definitely just to name one of the vehicles. Mm -hmm. That's really all I can think of on Parhelion 2, I would guess. Maybe on Azika's Chariot, since I believe the Chariot in uh, David's hand was seen. Oh, yes. But yeah, Pithing Needle is not a perfect answer by any means in this deck. And, you know, just whatever one you choose, maybe you just do the other. Play Azika's Chariot <laughs> or Sky Sovereign. The vehicles are definitely diverse in David's list. For sure. Why isn't this called a vehicles deck, huh? Why I not guess not. Vehicles? Yeah, you know what? Let's, <laughs> let's change it. Let's change it. Let's make the decision. Rafine's informant <laughs> hits the battlefield, able to connive. Dump some stuff in the bin. There goes Essica's chariot. Land for turn. Go. Limited all-star Rafine's informant. <laughs> not even. <laughs> it was fine. It's it like, was oh, fine, I need right? a two-drop? Sure. Yeah, yeah, You'll yeah. do. It's like the 3-1 Toxic 2 kind yeah. of, of, the, of this format, yeah. <laughs> All right, Ooh, there is nice. go oh, blank. blank. <laughs> Big hit. You had a graveyard. You no longer have a graveyard. <laughs> Excellent indeed. And Chariot was indeed named with a Bithing Needle. So we're going to discard some stuff and we're going to get rid of that entire graveyard. Graveyard's gone. A Ooh. couple of cards in the hand are gone. And we'll see what the last card that is kept. Looks like we do still have a Grease Fang in yeah, hand. Might just Pro be a 3-3 three, three at this rate. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Speed down's going. <laughs> <laughs> a 3-3. Three, three, put some respect on that name. It's a 4-3. Oh, 4-3. Yeah. Excuse Think me. Think of that clock, you know? Excuse me, Okiba <laughs> yeah. boss. Please don't come after me. Yep. I am but a lowly magic commentator. <laughs> All right, we are seeing attack in here. This is the kind of game plan that you obviously don't see or want to see if you're on the Abza and Grease Fang side. But the one thing as far as the fair game plan goes mm -hmm. is Azika's Chariot. That card will kill, you know, most Pioneer decks on its own if you're in this kind of attritioned out battle that we're seeing here where, you know, both players are thought seizing, both players are removing stuff. And there's one more thought seize revealing the land, of course. The classic gotcha. Oh, yeah. It's like, haha, you did two damage to yourself to yep. steal land. I bet you're happy with yourself. And that's the problem with Rakdos sometimes. You know, you draw thoughts he's late. It might be one of the best cards no. in Pioneer, and it's awesome to take something early, but when you draw it late, it's uh, not the best. And there is a cherry at the top. Lovely. Oh, Lovely. Can't keep a good cat down as we are in top deck mode now for <laughs> David Inglis. The kitty cats are mm -hmm. able... Is that, what you call, yep. is that what you call your vehicle back home, the Cadillac? I know you have a lot of uh, cat You call friends, it the Cadillac. Right? I call it the kitty car. A kitty car, okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, is that what you call your personal car at home? No. Okay, we'll come. <laughs> <laughs> That's a doom scar, but anyway, <laughs> I digress. So two cats on the board. Essex's chariot will not be able to be crewed, so it's just sitting there looking fancy. 16 to 6, so Alberto certainly lacking a couple life points there. Needs to find something else... To add to this battlefield, looks like another copy of Castle Lockthwain. Yep, and we have the castle draw step at end step to be able to find something here. Oh, something like a shield grid there. is definitely what Alberto is looking oh, for. Yeah. That would be great, but this is not a bad option either. Just able to pad the life total a little bit and a decent blocker as well. If it flips to nighttime, yeah, it's a 4-4. Four -four which can chew on two things, so. Yeah, absolutely. And Shieldred could be a possible mm -hmm. possibility, not even in the deck, you know? I mean, it's not great against the Parhelion 2 plan. Mm. Um, you know, hard to cut that card because it is incredible, but. Yeah. 
I feel like we should a woo every time it goes tonight, but uh, <laughs> Mike we've already complaint. got the Fermiridon thing. We can okay. we can't have too right. many things, you know. Uh, we should get Marshall and Paul to a woo. Okay. Oh, yeah, I'm sure they'll yeah. they'll be down for that. For yeah, sure. yeah. <laughs> so up to nine. So Alberto padding life total quite nice there, courtesy of the flipped werewolf. Yeah, Graveyard Trespasser, incredible card, especially when it flips. You, you really have to plan out a way to discard Parhelion and play Greasefang in the same turn when that mm. card's on the battlefield. And the one thing that Abzan Greasefang doesn't really do too well is, is kill creatures. Yeah. You just kind of try to bypass them. There's yeah. not too many creatures that you really care about. Yeah, you just kind of want to fly over the top, but we haven't seen any over-the-top bops going right now. And okay. that's the nascency. Let's see. That's Greasefang and oh, Chariot flipped. Chariot, okay. And this could be Deep. lethal. Um, yeah, so I'll, I'll keep the, the one that's going back to your hand. Keeping the one that goes back to your hand, says David. Mm -hmm. Trigger's going to go on the stack. It doesn't matter, so I get two cats. Yeah. Two kitty cats, let's go. By the body language of Alberto, I think this might be... Okay, maybe had the removal spell and didn't want to... Go for it. It wouldn't have been lethal, mm -hmm. to be fair. It would have uh, put Alberto down to, well, like, yeah, it would have put him down to one and wouldn't have been able to use Castle Lockedway. And so, yeah, kind of interested why we didn't want to try to crew it, really just protecting it from removal. And, you know, probably the pithing needle that is right yeah. on the battlefield saying chariot. <laughs> that might be it. It's uh, all good. Yeah, exactly. Sometimes <laughs> you just get excited, but you didn't have the license for the cat car. There so we go, yeah. You got the a license was, was, was revoked, revoked by Pithing Needle. <laughs> Absolutely. But still, plenty of cats on the board here for David Inglis. Yep. Things looking quite good indeed, and double spelling, flipping the graveyard glutton back to the trespasser. So. Yeah, look at that. And that was all facilitated by one vessel of nation. Yeah. Not what a only, card. yeah, incredible card in this deck. And a really smart addition that just kind of, you know, th there's those kind of additions that pros mm -hmm. make when it comes to these pro tours that you're just like, oh, of course, why didn't I think of that? It's like, <laughs> well, you know, I was in a testing house for two weeks, you know, <laughs> trying to figure these things out. But yeah, that's why they get paid the big bucks. You know? Absolutely. They went into the lab and they came out with uh, <laughs> a nice addition to an already good deck. You love to see innovations in what seems like a solved archetype. So kudos to them for adding these, uh, you know, Pretty great cards to this list. Absolutely. And now it's even better now, just having to bounce the Azekas Chariot. Usually that's a drawback from yeah. Greasefang. Oh, it's fine now. It's perfect here. That's exactly what you want. Boing, boing. More cats. <laughs> Love to see it. So we're going to kick things off there with the Chariot. <laughs> Ran One out of cats. One more time. Ran out of cats, yeah. Cats out of the bag, if you will. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Just reassign. There's the three cats able to turn sideways and go uh, scritch a couple of life points there from Alberto Machado Gomez. Go to combat. Yeah, let's go to combat. That's my favorite phrase. So going to combat, trying to just bring the other Azekas Chariot back. That was kind of the disadvantage of having to leave back Graveyard Trespasser. Mm -hmm. But you got to block. Yeah. Block or die at this point. Yep. Yeah, you Ooh, draw off Castle as a desperation way to find a way. And that's going to be it. Impressive. Not finding a piece of removal or anything to keep him alive. And David Inglis advances to 6-0. and oh. Yeah. Making it look easy with Greasefang. Yeah, and look at that. Look at the resiliency of that deck. You, we saw the Pithing Needle that was naming the correct mm -hmm. card. That is That was David's whole plan there. And it just didn't matter. You know, that deck just still produced enough cats where you're able to get across without having to ever crew the vehicle. So, yeah, that looked uh, really impressive. When in doubt, cats out. Just start throwing them at people. There you go. Yeah, that's <laughs> how you win magic games. Just just get the cats in there, friends. Okay. So, Essex's Chariot proving to be an absolute powerhouse. Once again, we are going to jump into more magic here. Jakub Toth versus Reed Duke. Two excellent players here. And a team fight. Is it creativity? <laughs> This is a team fight. These two oh, are on the same team. So we're going to see, this is game three, so we are going to see this um, this sideboard plan enacted. You know, both players, I've talked to them before, and they're like, yeah, mm -hmm. you can't tap out for creativity because then you die. <laughs> you know? So both both teammates, they switch. They have four Shark Typhoons and what we just saw, the Kraken <laughs> in. And it's a lot of draw go. Yeah. And we're going to see, you know, 
for any control fans out there, mm -hmm. control mirror fans, we're going to see that draw go game between two excellent players. I could not be more excited. I'm so in. <laughs> well, like you mentioned, draw go is the name of the game at this point, as both players just getting their mana base established and making sure that they have the answers to whatever it is. Whoever blinks first. Yes. You know, you've got to make sure you have the answers for it and you've got to make sure you keep up with the mana. And this is always interesting, you know, you, you never want to play teammates and you also mm. don't like actively test the team deck unless you're playing like Rakdos against Rakdos. Like yeah. then, of course, that's something you need to know. But this is a relatively unknown quantity as far as a deck goes. So both these players are really just going on intuition from mm. their good magic ability to try <laughs> to outplay the other. But both players are incredible. So, you know, not an easy feat. Not at all. We're going to get two spirits here, courtesy of Sokin's and Crucible of Defiance. Unable to interact with the channel ability, except via some magic card somewhere that isn't in these lists. So. Yes. <laughs> all right, here's a clock. Ten turn clock. <laughs> uh, it'll be interesting to see how they sideboard against the mirror, because we saw the transformative sideboard plan mm. in other matchups with Gabna Seif at the helm, but... Now we're just going to see a good old Fable the Mirror Breaker hit the battlefield here. Yep. And I think they basically know how each other are sideboarding. There's not much you can do because you have the creativities, you have the Zendigos, mm -hmm. you have the World Spine Worm. They have to come up. Yeah. You know, that's the whole plan B, and then you just bring in every card. Yeah. <laughs> Except yeah, sure. the Rending Volleys. That's pretty much... <laughs> otherwise, they're bringing in every card in their sideboard. Fire Prophecy will take care of the little Treasure Goblin. And do we see any cards going back? I do see Indomitable Creativity in hand, though. So we may well see a World Spine Worm yet. Okay, forget everything I just said. <laughs> I have no idea what's going on. Listen here, we can't keep erasing people's memories. Yeah. We're going to get caught out. That's fair, that's fair. Chapter 2, is there anything we're going to see discarded here for the Duke? Yeah, that would be the next level aspect, just to be like, yeah, we said we're taking out the combo, so <laughs> I'm going to leave it in. <laughs> The land discarded, plus a piece of removal. No creatures to be hit just yet on Jakob Toth's side of the battlefield. Fire impulse ditch. There's land for turn. And like you mentioned, 10 turn clock. These little idiots could get it done. Absolutely. And Jakob Toth yes. made the top four of the World mm -hmm. Championship, our last premier event, with uh, Mono Blue from the same team. That was really dominant. So impressive to see him back. We're going to be seeing him all year. Oh, yeah. Plenty more magic out of this young man as we're going to see Impulse dig for some more answers. There's a Muta Vault added to the board. So at least one way to slow down this clock for these little <laughs> two nuggets as a big old shark might accelerate <laughs> things here, Corey. When I see six lands tapped <laughs> and a shark put on the battlefield, I was like, did it happen? You know chat just want to see a hard exactly. shark typhoon, right? Hi, I'm chat. <laughs> <laughs> I love seeing hard cast shark typhoon. Always fun uh, and almost never correct. Yep. <laughs> and now we do see the flipped... Um, Fable the Mirror Breaker, Reflection mm -hmm. of Kiki Jiki. That is hey, able to copy these sharks if there's not an answer for it. Yep, so Jakob has one turn to find an answer for the shark as well as yep. the Fable, the A flipped uh, Kiki Jiki. Yep, absolutely. And we saw that magic shark number. Oh, Ooh. hey, buddy. Kraken. And now let's see if Reed has the immediate answer, aka multiple removal spells. <laughs> you, know, you can't counter this. You, oh, oh Ottawa. 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 Yep. Get out of here, you. Yeah, that's a time Play walk. it again. Now the big deal. Yeah, there's really no one drops besides like fiery impulse. So Jakob's not really able to go Kraken plus removal yeah, spell to bounce to Shark. Something. So, and, and Shark is at a 4-4 four, four right now, which is kind of the magic number in this mirror. Yeah. We saw a 6-6 six, six Shark from Nasif up against Phoenix. That was kind of the magic number there with Lightning yeah. Axe being the removal spell. There's a lot of deal threes in each of their decks. Mm. The only deal four is Rending Volley. And uh, yeah, that's uh, that's probably not coming. <laughs> in. And, uh, I wouldn't imagine so. Yeah. No. Oof. Oh man, big thinking. You know, for Toth, you mm -hmm. can see, he's just kind of tank it a little bit. Thinking, how the heck do I survive? Shark attack. And let's see, we got to dig through time in there. They're one of dig through time. There is that creativity, which honestly, it might be time. Just <laughs> well, hit his creatures. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it's great because there's, well, never mind. You just flash into Hallbreaker Horrors. Like Reed will just either put in Hallbreaker Horrors or the yeah. combo. Yeah, that's not, not something you want to do because yeah. it's like, okay, did you take out all your creatures? And we know the answer is very likely to be new. Yeah, so I'm very curious what creativity... 
Yeah, okay, you get your own Kraken. All right, that okay. checks out. That works. Now, this is basically Jakob saying, if you have a removal, you win, Reed. Yeah. Targeting the creature, that is the Mutavolt, animated. But if you don't, here comes a Hallbreaker Horror, almost assuredly. And then it looked like Jakob only had two uh, counter spells, mm -hmm. so you're not able to proactively play something to bounce. All right, let's so. see. Dig a dig a dig a dig. Why are we, we digging go. a hole? Let's <laughs> find out. Critter, 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 where are you, buddy? Hey, there we go. Okay, now two mana up. Is he able to do anything with that? Yeah, I saw Make disappear for sure, but I didn't see anything like a Fiery Impulse, which would be amazing, mm. be able to kill Reflection and bounce the shark. Yeah. So, got some sharks attacking in here. Ten is the life total of Toth. I think as long as Reed Duke doesn't play any spells, yeah, just don't he can do copy anything. a shark and then attack for exactly lethal here. Nine in the air plus one on the ground, that equals ten. But if Reed, if Reed <laughs> decides to play anything, Jakob's just going to make, make disappear. I don't care if you pay two, yep. bounce the shark. But there's risk to this. If, if yep. Reed goes for that, Reed will probably know that, you know, the coast is clear when mm. Reflection targets shark and you get a, uh, a, copy. A, a copy. But you're still in a lot of trouble if you go for that and it doesn't work. Yeah. Of course, we're working with almost perfect information. We know what Toth is up to and hoping for. Yep. But Reed Duke being the excellent player that he is, Hall of Famer, that is going to think of every single possibility before he makes his decision. For sure. Yep. There's a big spot. You know, both players already locked for day two. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, you wanna you wanna get as much wins as possible. And here looks like the play. Reed giving it a double check. Mm -hmm. I believe that Mutavault entered this turn so that's not able to get in. I could be wrong on that, but I mean that's a, lot of, that's a lot of damage in the air there, Corey. Yep. It's exactly lethal here. It is indeed. So, able to block one of those. Let's see, is there anything for Toth Deep in hand? Time. No! <laughs> that is going to do it for the Duke. 2-1 against a teammate. Yep. Gotta feel bad, but at the same time, it's so, you know, you, can't, you have yep. to be happy for your, your opponent and your teammate, right? Yeah, you it, definitely a do. A team I win mean, is a win. It, it is, you know, not necessarily a team sport. You know, it's a team before you It's a team sport before you get into the event. And then mm. everything starts over. Doesn't matter if you play a team. You got to try to do your best. Win that trophy yourself. Oh, yeah. So, of course, there's going to be some hurt feelings. But, you know, Reed's going to be pretty happy about it still, I think. For sure. We've got plenty more magic, my friends. We're going to take a quick break. And we'll be back with Maria after the